Thank you very much for the introduction. Uh, today, I'm going to introduce our community-wide activities toward uh, next generation advanced computing infrastructure. And OK, so in December 2019, we have established a kind of initiative called Next Generation Advanced Computing Infrastructure, or NGACI for short. That is for studying and discussing technical uh, issues and necessary R&D for uh, future HPC systems. And of course, it is very important uh, computing infrastructure in the future. So we have been discussing a roadmap towards such a uh, computing platform. And we have written a um, white paper based on our discussion about uh, next generation uh, machines. In these activities, we have uh, three invited seminars and seven meetings. And now we have uh, 99 community members and so it's already a big group. So in order to discuss deep technical, technical issues, uh, we have created four working groups, device and architecture, system software, and application library and algorithm, and system operation working groups. Since uh, we thought uh, that uh, this kind of uh, advanced computing infrastructure will offer a wide variety of services in the future, like the platform, so we have a special working group about uh, discussing uh, uh, system operation. For the white paper, all the content have been in already at the last November, but now I'm uh, still doing the proofreading and format adjusting. So it uh, takes a bit of time. Uh, <clears throat> sorry about that. So, but of course we have already uh, all the contents still in Japanese, but if you want to see the, uh, the document, please contact me. And here's a uh, contributor of uh, the white paper. So I'm in charge of uh, responsibility, uh, responsible for all the uh, contents. And as I said, we have uh, four working groups and each has two or three uh, leads. And we have uh, a lot of uh, contributors for each uh, working group discussions. And I'd like to thank all the contributors for their great effort. And here is a section organization of the white paper. Maybe it's good to show uh, this uh, organization uh, because it's good to capture uh, or the entire uh, picture of the white paper. So it begins with introduction and also technological trends of supercomputer systems. In past 10 years and also uh, forward working of uh, next few years. And its uh, content has a broad range from uh, hardware devices to uh, application aspect. And also we have uh, uh, system operation technology trend in section two. And the main part of uh, this white paper is section three and section four. And section, section three describes, about, uh, describes analysis of application performance requirement and section four uh, describes a study on next generation systems in 2028 or expected performance of uh, future systems, especially in two uh, big architecture groups. One is a general purpose architecture and the other one is a domain specific architectures. And section five briefly describes a, a requirement for next generation uh, system operation. And in section six, uh, we uh, briefly describe uh, challenges and our uh, necessary R and D for uh, from each uh, working group. So now let's move on to the uh, uh, some introduction of uh, the contents of our the white paper. So first, I'd like to uh, talk about the expected landscape of next generation systems uh, in year twenty twenty eight or uh, maybe year twenty thirteen in this time frame. So we have considered several variations of system types. One is a general purpose architecture. And in general purpose architecture, we assume uh, we have three uh, type of systems like uh, many core based system. It's similar to uh, Fugaku or uh, A64FX in the processor part. 
And uh, for uh, GPU integrated systems, of course, it has a um, GPU and host CPUs. And this is very common uh, system architecture in recent supercomputer systems. And the other type is a vector processor. And everybody uh, maybe easy imagine that is a uh, projection of uh, SX or Tsubasa uh, system developed by NEC. And the other type of uh, architecture is domain specific architecture. And we have crunched that or discussed uh, three kind of, of kinds of uh, uh, architecture types, like extended CPU type, accelerator based type, and processor in memory type. As for extended CPU type, it is uh, several you know, uh, special uh, purpose functionality is included in uh, general CPUs. For example, recently Intel AMX or uh, FMA MRA in SVE has introduced as an ISA extension, which uh, are uh, kind of uh, matrix engine. And also recently additional data types such as B416 or 8-bit or 4-bit with uh, introduced mainly uh, for uh, machine learning workloads. This extension is uh, considered as an extended CPU type. And the other one is accelerator-based type. And of course, it is very uh, difficult to quantitatively uh, describe or analyze this accelerator-based type since uh, uh, there are a wide uh, variety of architectures and also we need a deep discussion with application people. So <clears throat> we briefly on uh, qualitatively discussed uh, this accelerator based type. And we categorize uh, several architectures, uh, maybe we classify uh, several accelerator types. And the last one is processor in memory, which will be a very important architecture in the future. Also, we have uh, briefly discussed about the new computing paradigm like uh, neuromorphic computing and quantum computers. Because these are very uh, important and interesting uh, computing paradigm, but as uh, everybody imagine, in time frame of 2028 to 2030, maybe a general a classical computer uh, will be a mainstream. But uh, we have to uh, consider uh, further in new computing paradigm for uh, future, uh, maybe next to post exascale uh, uh, supercomputer systems. And let's uh, move on to the projected uh, or expected performance of future systems. So we expect, we project the future system performance based on several materials. For processors, uh, we used IRDS roadmap uh, system and architecture 2017 and 2020 edition. In the roadmap uh, for uh, high-end high servers, the number of core per socket is expect, expected to be uh, 70 cores and the bit width of SIMD unit is 24 bit, and maybe there are two uh, SIMD unit in the processor, uh, in a core, uh, which will be operated in 32, uh, 30, uh, 3.9 gigahertz. And TDP of the CPU socket will be 351 watt. As for projecting GPU uh, uh, based system, we project the performance based on the history of high performance GPUs from NVIDIA. And we found that the expected performance uh, is very conservative in this projection. So we have uh, another uh, way to project the performance. It is based on the relative performance to the expected CPU performance in the future. This is, uh, we call it an aggressive projection. As for network and storage, we used uh, uh, this document and we borrowed some parameters from these documents. An important design constraint is total system power budget. And we uh, assume the three cases of uh, power uh, budget, total system power budget, 30, 40, and 15 megawatts with a PoE of 1.1. And also uh, we assume the three cases of uh, ratio of our CPU power budget to the total uh, power budget. It, uh, it, uh, there are uh, 60, 70 and 80%. Yeah, 
Yes, uh, the result of projected performance of many core-based systems for 2028. And because of the time, uh, I, I can only focus on the most aggressive case, that is uh, 50 megawatt of system power budget. And also 80% of the power budget can be devoted to CPU power as computing part. And in that case, we can have uh, uh, more than uh, 7 million cores. And the expected performance uh, is uh, 1.8 exaflops. I know this is uh, maybe disappoint disappointing result. So it uh, is expected that we can achieve only 3.37x uh, uh, performance of Fugaku. Uh, I think it's not enough in the systems in 10 years later. So next, we focus on the GPU-based machine. And we have a, a conservative projection here and aggressive projection here. Again, I can focus only on uh, most aggressive cases, 50 megawatt and 80% of the total power budget is devoted to the computing part. And for conservative projection, uh, the GPU-based system only can only achieve uh, 28 exaflops. Again, this is not so uh, uh, a good uh, expected performance. But for a uh, case for aggressive projection, maybe it can achieve uh, 80 exaflops. And it means it is 33.5x uh, performance of Fugaku. Then uh, it is more uh, a good, uh, it can achieve more good performance, but so we assume very aggressive uh, parameter number, like 50 megawatt and 80% of power budget can be used for uh, computing part. Therefore, uh, as a result, we uh, think uh, we have a lot of things to do for the future uh, development of next generation systems. And in, uh, for uh, accelerated type architecture, uh, we, as I said, we uh, qualitatively discussed about what kind of uh, configuration can be enabled in the future. And here is an example of the discussion. We consider the several types of uh, accelerated integration like system on chip, or multi chip module or internal integration and an or lack level integration. And also, of course, there are several uh, trade-off uh, advantage and disadvantage, uh, disadvantage of uh, this uh, accelerated integration type. Uh, because of the time, I'm uh, going to skip uh, the detail of this uh, discussion. And also, uh, uh, we discussed about uh, several classes of accelerator, like a specific accelerator, which uh, means uh, it is designed for a specific compute domain or a problem. Of course, we can achieve, uh, uh, if we make such a specific an accelerator, then we can achieve very high performance and high power efficiency. But of course, it will be uh, lowest flexibility and lowest programmability. And the, another category is semi-specific accelerator. Uh, it can execute uh, uh, specific uh, computation models or several computing domains. And it maybe lose some performance efficiency, but uh, it can uh, have more flexibility and programmability. And we, uh, the final one is generic accelerator. It, it, can, uh, it is uh, developed by some uh, sort of field programmable platforms like FPGA or CGRA. And next, I would like to talk a little bit about uh, uh, analysis on application performance requirement for uh, a future uh, HPC machine. We have analyzed 37 applications based on uh, science roadmap uh, developed by application community. And also a questionnaire uh, survey in our center. And the purpose of this analysis uh, is uh, categorize the necessary system type based on uh, the application requirement. 
and also uh, we would like to investigate how uh, general purpose architecture system surface the requirement of uh, these application applications. And also uh, we this is for uh, considering research direction towards next generation systems. And uh, in this document, we assume the system configuration for the future uh, HPC machine is uh, uh, to afford many core based system and GPU based system. And again, we only focus on the most aggressive cases like 50 megawatt and 80% of uh, power can be deployed for uh, CPU or GPUs. And here is the uh, application and their system requirement. And as uh, we see from this uh, chart, uh, there are a wide variety of requirements for each uh, computing component. For example, some application need a very large number of nodes, um, very uh, large uh, memory bandwidth, and also uh, big memory size. And uh, we see uh, this uh, very wide variety of application requirements. And also uh, we found that we should include more application types. And this is our feature work. And here's uh, one result from uh, the application analysis. We brought uh, each application requirement in terms of Required memory size in the x-axis and required memory bandwidth in y-axis. Each plot corresponds to each application, and the red point shows uh, red point shows red points show uh, that this type uh, this application is uh, satisfies with uh, this memory size and uh, network bandwidth in terms of the projected uh, machine. And the orange uh, dot shows uh, memory is not sufficient, but the network is okay. And the gray dot shows uh, memory, both memory and network performance is not sufficient. So we see that uh, many applications uh, quite, uh, satisfy, satisfactory, but uh, half of the application is not satisfactory, not uh, uh, Current uh, experts uh, systems cannot meet their requirement. And here's the case for a mini core based system. And here's the result for a GPU based system. Okay, here's a summary of required system characteristics from the application analysis. Uh, for uh, the application that requires uh, general syst purpose systems, is uh, listed here. And several applications uh, need uh, more memory size and the memory bandwidth. And this uh, listed here. And some <clears throat> applications uh, is very computing performance oriented. So they require more uh, computing performance like number of uh, more nodes or number of more cores. And some application need more uh, specialized network or on network performance. And then, so I have only uh, maybe a few minutes. So uh, let's uh, summarize the challenge on around the roadmap from several aspects. The first is uh, from the architecture uh, aspect. So about computing engine, uh, we need to improve the power efficiency because uh, more uh, performance is mainly restricted by uh, power budget. And also, uh, we think about uh, how uh, to handle a long vector length in CMD unit. And so maybe we need to consider 2 dp arrays or matrix engine for uh, tensor processing. And of course, uh, we, <coughs> we see that uh, general purpose machine, we can achieve uh, not uh, very high performance in the future we need to uh, think about uh, some sort of accelerator uh, functionalities. And there are a bunch of uh, research challenges 
and research and development roadmap about the memory and interconnect as shown here. And here is uh, from software, uh, system software aspect. Uh, for uh, basic uh, system software, maybe we need to think about the NVDM support. And also for a much parallel and accelerated environment, we need to think about the efficient cooperation among CPU and accelerated parts. And also, of course, uh, as a traditional uh, requirement, we need uh, to care about the transfer and checkpointing and optimizing uh, correct view operations. And uh, several uh, new uh, research challenge is here. For example, uh, we have to develop a data framework and also uh, provider or power management uh, uh, for, uh, middleware. And the last one is uh, challenges and roadmap from library and algorithm. For example, we need to think about the old tuning, which can handle heterogeneity or mixed expression processing and society 5.0 applications. And old tuning should uh, integrate the AI functionality. And of course, we need to think about the four trials and the machine learning framework optimization and accelerating the specific problems like uh, graph processing. And the white paper uh, discussed about uh, collaboration with a new competing paradigm. Okay, here is the summary of uh, my talk. So I uh, introduced a community-wide effort of Energy HCI and the contents of the white paper. And we briefly talk about the expected landscape of next generation systems in year 2028. And also uh, we, I show uh, the result of analysis of application performance requirement. And briefly talk about the challenges and uh, around the roadmap. And key takeaway from uh, this uh, white paper is that uh, it is necessary to integrate a sort of uh, specific functionalities for uh, a specific accelerator functionalities for higher performance. And uh, as a uh, uh, traditional application uh, like, uh, several applications need higher memory bandwidth and large memory size. And therefore we may need uh, aggressive use of low operation arithmetic in the future. And we need to think about next generation operation for further contributing to uh, society 5.0. And more so important thing is uh, application and the system uh, co-design effort will be more important than ever. That's all of my talk. Thank you very much.